Thought I'd make a quick tutorial on how you can upload maps, like the ones I make, to Roll20 and show you some tips on using its advanced tools like dynamic lighting. First off, let's start by going to the page toolbar where we define the settings for the map we're about to upload. By hovering over our new page and clicking the wheel in the left corner called page settings. Here we find our basic settings and a couple of more advanced ones we'll use later on to set up our dynamic lighting. First, let's take care of the page size. Something that is defined in units of 5 feet, or more depending on what scale you use. The map I'm uploading is 30 squares by 42, or 150 feet by 210 feet. Once we've filled in the size, click OK and we can get to uploading the map itself. Now there are two ways you can proceed, and I'll start by using a gridless version of my map first. Drag it into the page, and once it's been uploaded, we will right click the image and define its dimensions in the advanced part of the menu. Since I've chosen to use this entire page for a single map, I'll just set its dimensions in units instead of pixels, and input the same dimensions as I did for my page settings, 30 by 42. Click set or press enter and voila, our map is up to scale. Then all we have to do is simply align the page. Next, let's change our workspace from map and background to objects and tokens to import some custom design tokens. Now as soon as I drop my custom tokens, it will lock into the grid provided by Roll20. Now, some DMs might like this, but I generally don't enjoy the fact that they're locked in like this, seeing that I can't control them exactly the way I want to use my tokens. So that's why I'll show you a second way of uploading a map, using a pre-gridded version. Simply upload it and change its dimensions again by right clicking, advanced and then set dimension. Same as before, use units instead of pixels and enter 30 by 42. Align to the window of our page and then instead of just uploading tokens, I'll go into the page toolbar and get into page settings again where I will turn off the grid as used by Roll20. Leaving just a grid in my custom map visible. Now, when I import a custom token, I can scale it as I please, not being locked into the grid anymore. I like to use these side view tokens instead of the top down ones, because they look great in my pseudo isometric maps. I also like drawing them because I can use them both for print and digital use. When uploading them, you can flip them around easily. Same goes for anything else in an advanced settings you can access by right clicking. Now next we need to quickly make a player token. You can do this with a player sheet attached like I have one right here to get a good grip on setting up the dynamic lighting for our map. To make sure the tokens of our players have access to the lighting of the map and can actually see when playing, we need to click the wheel in the bottom left of our token to edit its settings. Go into the advanced and you'll see that it has all sorts of options for lighting emitting light, seeing the light that is emitted, and having sight. This is important for the tokens of our players, so they can see the light that is emitted by the stuff in our game, like torches or whatever source of light we have put in. Next we go into the workspace called Dynamic Lighting. This is where we'll set up what the boundaries are for our light. Basically tell the system where the walls are in our map. This is done by drawing over the walls of our map with the Line tool. You can also use shapes for maps inside buildings for instance. Use a bright color to define this line. It makes it easier to see where you're putting it. The players won't see it anyway. Now what I'm doing here is a really quick and not that organized way of selecting the area of my dynamic lighting. If you really want to put effort into it, you should leave stuff like the cave entrance open and you can put in a basic square as a sort of doorway that you can move aside during the game to open up a new area to your players as you play. For this short tutorial, let's keep it quick and easy. Next we go back into our page op options and enable dynamic lighting so our players can actually see it. Then I enforce line of sight so players can see further than they should and keep the other stuff deselected. Update on drop can be nice if you want your players to think about their moves and not see while they're moving about. Restricted movement gives you control so they can't enter areas they shouldn't. The walls of the boxes you drew earlier will become the boundaries of their movement. 
Now you will notice that there's a sort of fog of war present on our map, that will give us a preview of what the light is doing in our map. Nothing as of yet, because there aren't any sources of light present. Clicking Ctrl L on a token will show you what the player would see using that token. Right now it doesn't see anything. So let's put in a couple of light sources. You can use stuff like torches and have players be able to carry them etc. But for this tutorial, I'll show you an easy way of putting in some light that creates atmosphere. I simply search for a basic orb, it's a see-through object, and it can be basically anything you can upload, and put it where I want my source of light to come from. Then lower left corner wheel again and go into the advanced settings for light. Now we want to select that all players can see the light source and define what the light source does exactly. First controls the area of effect of our light, and the second number controls at what point dim light starts on our light source. Using both gives the map a lot of flavor, instead of simply using light only. Let's do 60 and 30 for this source. And immediately we get a sense of what our players will see when playing on the map. To add more light sources, just control C and control V to copy and paste the light source wherever you want. Outside I want the players to have full visibility. So I add light sources wherever needed and put them full blast, 500 feet radius or something of the likes. As soon as we're done, we can get to testing what the map looks like for our players next. So select the token again, we put in for our player and press Ctrl L to see what our player sees. When there are a couple of blind spots, you can simply fix them by adding some dim light. Put 0 feet where dim light starts and we're done. and then again pressing Ctrl L when selecting our player token and we can roam the map to make sure they see everything we want them to see. I hope this tutorial was useful and if you have any other questions you would like me to get to answering regarding this kind of stuff, feel free to message me wherever you can find me.